Hey y'all, it's Melissa. Welcome to Messy Missy Creates. Um, I'm going to make my October journal. Um, this is probably, it might be part one of part two or part one of a two part series, but if I can squeeze it all in one video, I will. Um, I've kind of already got my stuff picked out, but I wanted to show you what my options were or they still are. I, I could always change my mind. Um, I have some papers that I got in Happy Mail and they're roughly about six inches wide, which is about what I use for my covers. And I got these in Happy Mail from Hope. And I always love this one, but I think I've used it on a cover before, maybe a year or two ago. And I love this one. Um, I've used this as an inside cover. And let me show you it looked really good with this fabric. I thought, oh, I have a definite winner. And I don't know if the colors are coming out the same to you as they are for me, but um, definitely, you know, I like this material. But then, let me set that to the side because, um, and I'll finish showing you. Some of these I've made tags out of. Um, let's see. Yeah, I think I had finished most of them. But I can also use some of these as my inside cover, too. I like using these little plaids for that, or gingham, or whatever that would be called. And I have one. She sent me one of each. So I would have to do the back cover different than the front cover, which is fine. Because, like, if I were to use this one, this material looks good with either either paper. And I've been thinking, you know, I want to get a little more creative with my covers. And I think I'm going to start in the new year um, because I kind of vowed to myself that I was going to have all the same size and kind of journals this year. So, but I am getting a little bit bored with it. Not really bored, but more like um, I just want to just venture out a little bit. Um, maybe same size. I don't know. Maybe use some books or whatever, but... Anyway, and then this is a, pad, a paper pad I got that I just flipped for y'all not too long ago. So, I did think about using one of these. I love the sunflowers, but, and I really liked this one. It said, Hello Autumn. And I like this one. I may use this as one of my inside papers. It's kind of that burnt orange, kind of goldish orange um, with pumpkins on it. There was one big sunflower up here that I really thought about using that one. And I think I'm gonna pull it out. I just wanna see, I should have two of them. I'm thinking about framing one for my room. Yeah, there's the other one. And then this one was good too. Um, I like it with the sunflowers with the white background better than I like the one with the black background. The other one just seems so dark. And then there's these pumpkins right here. But if you remember, if you saw my haul from Joann's, or Joanne, no, it is still Joann's to me. Um, I had gotten three. I didn't know what paper I was going to use, so I had gotten three. Oh, the other one is a white, gold, white, orange, and black plaid. Like a... Um, Anyway, I'd gotten these three fabrics to use as my spine. And so, in selecting that, I really didn't find a fabric unless I go in my stash and look. Because this is kind of how it would look. And I just don't know if I want to do that. Um, I don't, I don't know. So, it's not like going, woohoo, you know. So, but I do love this fabric. So, I will use that to make something this month or tags or something. So, then I had this one lonely sheet of paper that I got a long time ago from the um, from Hobby Lobby. And I love these pumpkins with the trucks. And at the time, I wanted to use, I wanted to use it, but I didn't. I don't think I used it. And then I had gotten this kind of teal colored with little pumpkins in it. I don't know if you can see the pumpkins. 
and this looks perfect with this. So I think that's what I'm going to go with. Like I said, I pretty much had made up my mind before I started the video, but I just wanted to kind of show you where I was at with all of that. This has a little bit of buffalo check in it, which would be perfect. I could even use some buffalo check ribbon. Um, anyway, so let's get, if you've been around a while, you know the drill. Um, I do this every month and sometimes I cut this part out of the video. Sometimes I, hold on, I got to get it opened up. Sometimes I leave out this part and sometimes I leave it in, but this is a family size Trisket box. Um, I, sometimes I assume that you're not all, you know, ones who watch, you know, have been around a while. It could be some new people here. So I thought, well, I'll go ahead and do it again. And because it's not that difficult and it doesn't take that long. Um, what I'm doing right now is I'm using my big Fiskars rotary cutter and I'm cutting the tabs off or the tops and the bottom off of my box and my flap, uh oh, my flap has completely come off now. Well, that could be a problem. Let me see if I can fix it real quick. Okay. My um, little guard, one of, the, one of the ends broke on it. The little knob that holds it, it snaps into place there. It broke off um, when I was trying to cram it into my drawer. Um, this is a very big and bulky cutter, but it's made, it's designed to cut cardstock and, I mean, cardboard and all that. And as you can see, it just went through two layers of cardboard box. So, um, and it's, I've got it listed in my, um, in the description. I've got the link listed. Um, I've got my Amazon affiliate links in the, in the description below if you're interested. But it's not, it's not horribly expensive, but it's not the cheapest one either. So, but to me, it's worth it. Okay, so... From here, I gotta bring this back. I just couldn't get it unfolded with that, with the, the cutter in the way. So I'm going to use, let me attempt to make this right side up only because it helps me remember. Let me move some stuff out of the way here. If I keep the box right side up, it helps me remember what's the front and back. Um, so I want to take this front spine. Now, if you saw my last month, if you saw me make my journal last month, I did it on live and I was just a talking and I cut in the wrong spot when I made my second cut. So I had to glue the spine together and I really liked it, but it did make it thick um, and it was harder for my needle to go through. So I'm going to try to do it the way I normally do it, which is I line this first bend in the box I line it up at the six and a half. I want my covers to be six and a half. Um, and the from top to bottom, it should be about nine or nine and a quarter inches tall. And let's see. It doesn't feel right. Okay, that's why. Because my guard was off. My, anyway, sorry, that was just a momentary bubble in my brain. Okay, so now this fold right here should measure six and a half. So then I flip it over, and now I'm going to measure still from that first. I'm ignoring this one. This one we're going to ignore. Now, last month, I cut it right down the middle, and then I glued them together. And you're welcome to do that if you want to. Um, if you're going to do that, just measure six and a half from here again, and then cut it down the middle and glue it. And um, 
but for my purposes, I want a half inch spine. So I'm gonna measure seven inches from the same bend or same crease that we measured the six and a half on the front, because that should give me a six and a, a half inch spine and a six and a half inch back cover. Um, that's what it should should do. See, okay, I'm on the seven inch. I don't know if you can see that. And cut. Okay, so now we should be able to get rid of the big cutter. And I have to bring in my scoreboard now. And I'm going to have to open it up. This one I got at the thrift store. I still haven't taken the sticker off of it. Um, because, like I said, we're going to ignore this one. We're going to ignore... Well, I'm trying to get the bone folder out. And I'm going to kind of flatten this one down a little bit. Because this is the one that we're using. We're ignoring this one. I'm going to try to flatten it out a little bit. I'll do a little bit more later. But now what I want to do is... I want to, that's not going to give me, I'm going to start on this one. Why is that not right? Okay. I thought you could butt it up against here. Maybe that's, but it, it, that's not where the one inch mark is. Oh, I see. Okay. So if you butted up to there. Okay, I just didn't know how to work my little cutter here. I don't want to cut, though. I'm just scoring. So now we're at zero. So one, two, three, four, five, six and a half. And we're going to score several times right here. Because this, this is a thick box. Okay. And I can see it from this side. I want to bend it. There we go. Now, again, like I said, you could cut that in half and glue it and have a more than a half inch spine. You could do whatever you, you know, whatever size spine you need. Um, let's see. I have a ruler right here. I was going to tell you. If you were to cut this box in half and do it that way, it this is about a two and a, not quite two and a half inch spine. So if you needed like an inch or inch and a half spine, that would be an ideal way for you to do that is just to cut down the middle right there and piece the two to get, just glue them together. But I started doing it this way so that I didn't have to worry about gluing the spines together or you know, adding that bulk in the, in my spine, because, you know, for as much bulk as you have here, you got to push your needle through it. So anyway, so right now I have half inch spine and I have, um, six and a half inch front and back cover. Okay. So so I should have, yep, 13 and a half is your total. If you want the same measurements, your box open needs to be 13 and a half inches. Now let me see how tall it is. It should be right about nine, somewhere in between nine and not, almost nine and a quarter, but not quite nine and a quarter. So my papers, I use six by nine papers. So that fits comfortably in this six and a half. I always give myself a half inch on the cover. That way when you, cause I use a, a single signature and your papers are gonna stick out if you do a single single signature. I just don't see the point in putting myself through putting more than one signature in every month, month after month. So that's how I do it. Now, if I were using these six inch paper pieces, I would do this because that's what I'm ultimately gonna do with this piece of paper is cut it down, cut it in half. And, and then my material will cover the spine right here. So, 
Let me get this cut down. Let me get my little paper trimmer here. This one just, just cuts paper. I mean, it might cut the other, I don't know, but I don't ever try it because I don't want to wear down my blade. Let me make sure this is 12 inches, yes. So I'm cutting this at six inches. And then I glue it on and then I'll cut the length off or the height. Okay. I think we're done with cutters for right at the moment. So now I have my front and back cover and you can kind of pick which cover you want. I think I like this one. Um, this one has this full truck in it twice. Um, has those in it, those in it. Has, yeah, maybe I like this one as my front. I don't know, it, it really doesn't matter. Really doesn't matter. No, I like my first choice. Okay, so let me get blue paper. Starting with a fresh glue paper because all my glue papers are getting really, really worn out and sticky. And I have a new glue stick. And I'm just going to glue this down. And then I trim it. And that way you don't have, you only have to line up two sides while you're gluing. And then you just cut this one off. So I want to see about how far over I want my glue. Right about there. And I just make sure I get around the edges really well. And if I need to reinforce my edges or my corners, um, I usually do that with our glitter glue. And, but I don't usually have a problem with it peeling too much. Okay. I'm gonna turn it so I can see, I don't know if you can see or not, but this way I can see my, where I'm lining it up. There we go. And it gives you a few seconds to wiggle a little bit if you need them. Okay, now I have a little bit of excess glue right there which is not a huge deal, but it is um, if I get it on my surface and then when I go to flip my um, journal over to do the inside cover. Um, yeah. Now this is thin paper, so we are probably going to see that crease, but it's gonna, that's why I keep it on the back side. It's not a huge deal. My friend, I'm going to go ahead and cut this off, flip it here, and just cut it like this. To me, that's so much easier than having to measure it perfectly. And then I keep these, and I use these as pockets in my, in my journal or tags or something like that throughout the month. So, yeah, I think I want the top. Okay. Get my glue paper back down. And how far over do I need it? About where the U is and the L up there and the C right here. Okay. So the C, the U, and the L. Whoop. I went over. To me, these larger glue sticks make this so much easier. I think they do anyway. They cover a lot of territory. Now this isn't that, um, there's one that's like a super jumbo size. I don't have that one. I thought about getting it, but I don't really need it. I have this one. This is the 1.4 ounce size. Okay, I am gonna make sure that I do it upright. Now I can see that I don't have enough glue on this front corner here. I like missed it totally. I definitely want my edges glued down. 
and here we go. This makes for a really fast and easy journal, I think. And you can use plain, um, I used to do this and just use plain papers on the inside. Um, and if you want like writing journal or whatever, or I would just decorate the pages. Um, I'd start with a white surface. Um, here the last few months, I've been doing more um, scrapbook paper and old book pages, music paper, that sort of thing. And I'm enjoying that, so I think I'm going to do that again this month. So, anyway, okay. There. And again, I'm going to put this in my little box to use through the month. And, alright, we have, that was my watch hitting my glass um, surface there. So, I'm going to get... I'm going to use that glue paper because this side still has some wet glue on it. And I don't want it to get on my glass surface. It doesn't matter. I can get it off my glass surface. But I just don't want to end up getting it and it sticking to my, my papers. So let me grab one more. Um, I use these from Sam's. They're the, they come 500 to a box. They're the dry wax papers. And I, one has lasted me, I mean, good grief, I've had these for this box for I don't know how many years. I use them over and over and over. Okay, so now we get to pick out, I am going to use some of these for my inside. Um, I'm thinking maybe that one and this plaid. Or... I might do something a little different and use like this one. I don't know. Let's see. Doesn't really matter. You're not going to see it with the front cover. All of them match for the most part. So if I did that and that, um, I think that would be fine. Or I could use this. Whatever I don't use, I'm going to make more tags out of. Um, these would probably make better tag backgrounds because um, they're a little bit more um, not as bold of a print, maybe. Okay, so if I'm going to use this one, then I have this one. Or I have... Oh, I could... Oh, wait. But wait. I could use these. I sure do like these. Um, these are kind of paisley. Okay, did I confuse you yet? I'm sorry. Let me see. I think I want these. Yeah, let's do that. I had forgotten about wanting to use those. Okay. And then I'm going to put those other papers back. And I will use some more of them throughout the month. I doubt I will make, I will get to use all of them. But what I don't use, I can use some in November. So we're on this side, we're going to do the same thing. Um, those are six inch papers, or they should be. Let me just measure them real quick. Um, close. Very close. Okay. So we're just doing the same thing. And, oh, sorry, I have a hair in my glue. Oh, now I still have a hair in my glue. All right. There we go. If it's on that side, it's easier for me to do. And, again, there's, there's going to be a gap. This doesn't matter which way you go. Otherwise, I would check and see because I've turned this thing around a couple times. If this was a directional print, like if it mattered what the top and bottom were, you would want to check that you have the top of your, your paper here or your journal. I 
So I'm burnish it down really well and get all the edges. I like that. Okay. Trim this one. Try not to get that in your, try not to hit you in the eye with it. Okay. These will be fun. These are, and I say pockets because they're the perfect size for a pocket. I already know they're the right size width-wise for my journal, and they're about the right size height-wise. Um, they also would make good tags. So we definitely can use those again. And then I'm gonna flip it so that I have it on my right side. And that glue on the other side must be dry by now. It's not sticking to anything. And normally I would put the same paper. I would just take a 12 by 12 and cut it in half. Um, but uh, she had sent me one of each of these six inch strips. And so I thought, oh, these would be perfect size to use on my journal covers. and which I was gonna do inside and outside, but then I found that pumpkin truck paper that I wanted to use. I've had it for a while and just haven't used it yet. So now I have. Okay, we're gonna line it up. Again, it doesn't matter which way is up. Um, uh, what I started to say was we're gonna make this we're going to cover this. Um, I'm not going to cover the whole thing. I used to use like some sort of fabric tape and cover the outside and the inside. But that was so many layers to go through that I don't... This is just for myself. If I was making this for somebody else, I might would cover this. But we're going to use some washi tape or ribbon right here. So you're not even going to see much of that cardboard anyway. Okay. Let me get these blue papers out of the way now. We should be done with them for a minute. And if you ever have them where you're, you're not completely straight, you can take a fingernail file and file that down if you want to. Okay, so we have a front and back cover, an inside front and back cover. And I think that's a great start to a journal. So now I do cover this one, this side. So I'm going to take some, I'm going to use this fabric. I just went, they had their um, fall and Halloween materials half off. And I just went in and asked for a half a yard. I picked three based on the papers that I remembered having. I don't know why I didn't, yes I do, um, because I got that paper pad the same day, but I think I went to the fabric department first. If I had gone to the paper department first, I would have matched some of that paper to, um, to some fabric. Okay, so what I'm doing here, if you can see this, is I'm trying to make sure, I'm just kind of getting an idea of how wide I want this. I want it to stick over about an inch on each side or maybe half inch or three quarters of an inch, whatever you want. And I'm gonna probably do it right about there. And I'm gonna make a little snip here. And fabric will tear a whole lot straighter than I can cut. So, um, and if you want that torn edge on both sides, you can, you can go back and tear this side too. Um, or you can just remove some threads and it'll get that rough look in a minute. Let's see. Stretch that back out here. I think I like, I want this sort of frayed edge on this. Let's see. I'm gonna trim off some. I'm not going to do a very good job at it. 
and I will come back and trim more of that later. But so now I'm going to take, try to unroll it here. It got a little rolled up right there. So anyway, I'm going to do some fat of uh, my Fabri-Tac. And I'm going to do it like this because I always end up not, I'm going to fold it about halfway up and I'm going to give myself kind of a little boxed area right here. And you can smooth that out um, sometimes like now, sometimes um, I may regret doing this, but I'm doing it. Um, it dries pretty quick though. But that way I kind of get it even. Um, if I start, there we go. And then I'll just fold this end up and glue it down too. Um, if I start and just glue, then I, inevitably I'll end up with it further on one side than the other. Which, you know, is not that big of a deal. Because you're not going to see the front and back at the same time. Um, by smoothing it out, either with your finger or with a, like a silicone um, spreader. Like a, one of those makeup applicator things. Um, you're not going to have as many of the bumps and lines as you sometimes get with wet glue and fabric. And then, if I need to, I can always go back and tack some edges like this. Um, however, I want to see, I might not do that yet because I want to see what, yeah, maybe I will. Um, I am going to put ribbon here. I just kind of wanted to see what kind of ribbon I'm going to use. Yeah, that does come through the... If you don't spread it out, it'll come through the fabric a little bit, like right there. So I'm gonna let that let that dry. And now um, I'm gonna look at washi. Oh, I'm gonna spill my washi everywhere first. Let's. See. Okay. Um, Obviously, I have, I think I want some definite fall ones. Maybe not I Love Fall. Although, I do have this. This would look great with this side. And again, your your journal signatures are going to be here. So, you're not going to see these two at the same time. So, if you want to do something on one side, like these are the same washies. Just a little speckle, just different colors. And I could do that because they, they match that side. Or I can do one like this that has leaves that may match both. Um, have this one that has pumpkins. Or I have these solid colors. And I could do that. This is a... Uh, Scotch duck. This is duck brand, like duct tape brand from Hobby Lobby. It's like washi tape, but it's made by duct tape. It sticks better. So, but I want to use something decorative, I think. Now, I do have, no, I would definitely want to use something fallish. I don't think I have found all of my fall washi. And. Let me see. Pardon for just a second. Um, I also can put ribbon down here if I don't like my washi options. Now, this one I think would match both. And I think the pumpkins would be fine. Um, I have candy corn. I mean, that actually might work. I don't really... I wanted more fall, not Halloween, but I almost like how that looks because it kind of matches each one or both sides. So that has potential. Let me put some of these other ones back. 
I have the teal and the kind of that tangerine color with rainbows on them, but I want pumpkins. It's time for pumpkins. So, um, she, Hope had given me some washing. I had it sitting right here. Um, let me see if any of this matches. And that, and I have this. I really love that orange and yellow plaid. And I have sunflowers. Oh, here's an orange and brown gingham. That matches that side, but not really that side. I'm gonna use the leaves. Um, or these pumpkins. Let me try these. Because this has like a greenish color in it, which might match that teal. Or that aqua color. And I know it'll match the, the orange side. Orange or red or whatever it is. Yeah, I think that'll work. I think that will work just fine. And if you end up not liking it, you can change it. I mean, you can put another piece over it. Now, every once in a while, I do have to glue this down. But because that's raw cardboard right there, I really don't have to very often. Um, sometimes it'll peel up a little bit, but... Anyway, I just do it mainly to cover the edge of the washi and cover up some of that cardboard. Now, again, like I said, if you want to take your fabric and go all the way around, um, I mean, I could have very easily done this again, and that would have been just fine. You know, you could definitely take, and, and I could have done that, and that would have been, you know, but, okay, so I'm going to put the washi up, and let's see, are we dry? How long are we in here? Um, and if you want to glue that down, you can. I like it to fringe up a little bit. I might straighten up this end, just a hair. But we are ready to pick out papers. And I don't know that I can do that in less than 30 minutes and bind it. So um, let me show you this real quick. And then I think we're going to stop this video. Um, these are some printables that I had done last year. They're still, they're still in my Etsy shop. I had put these on these candy corn uh, for October last year. They come, I think, in a set with um, some of these little cut-aparts the little cat with the little purple cape and kenny corn and pumpkins and another hat and then this is the 31st with the the third i only printed out the first page obviously it comes with 31 or you can have this 31st one with the face and the and the little hat and then some little candies and happy halloween with the little kitty on it and yeah so i know that one's in my etsy shop and then I have some pumpkins that I drew and they just have numbers on them. I do all my numbers to go to 31, so don't worry about it. Um, anyway, so there's that. And then I have the leaves I think I did last November. And they are, I believe this is what, it, I think I printed out the right thing. Um, they're fall leaves. Can you see them pretty well? with all the texture and everything in them. And they go to 31 also. And then I have, this is the fall, just kind of fall colors, um, you know, with the, the days of the week. And I try to do them in columns of four so that you can do a whole month. And you can also cut them in strips and have like a week's worth, because I keep them. Oh, that's the other thing. I would add pockets to the journal. Um, anyway, and then I did this purple and with the yellow and orange polka dots to match the candy corn and all those cut aparts. So, anyway, so that is, um, 
I don't know if this is separate from this set. I, I can't remember. Some of them I do them separately. Some of them I do as a set together. I can't remember. I didn't look right before the video, so. But I will try to link all those in my Etsy shop, or at least link my Etsy shop. It, but it's Messy Missy Creates. And I'll at least put a link to my Etsy shop in the description below. But I think I'm going to use some combination of that for October. Um, unless I come up with something else to draw between now and tomorrow or the next day. Because we're almost at the end of the month. So, um, do we do pockets or do we wait? Um, I like that one. And I don't really put one on the back cover that much. So I can glue this one down really quick. Yeah, that matches. That does pretty well. So let's put it on there. Now I'm going to use our glitter glue for this one. This isn't as thick a paper as I would like. I'm wondering if there's another... tempted to do something like that. What do you think? Um, I'm not going to cut that one down because I may use that one for my, in, for my November one. That one and that one and that one. We'll put to the side. That. I could do that. Or, if I was doing it on that side, I would do that one. I kind of like this. This is different. No, it's not wide enough. Okay, never mind. Not quite wide enough. That one's kind of cool looking. Or that one. What do you think? Um, There's this one, which looks really good. I can't tell what's up and what's down. To me, these look like they're hanging upside down. I guess they are hanging upside down because the writing goes this way. Um, maybe I like that one. Which is your favorite? Yeah. Um, or I can just use that one. I already have it. Let's do that. All that just for that. It's not very thick paper. That's what I was a little bit concerned about. But I think it'll be all right. It's just scrapbook paper weight, not cardstock weight. I did not get much glue to come out of there. And then I push in on the top edges just a little bit so that you can fit fit stuff in there. And there we go. Okay. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this. Or if you're new, I hope that you learned something. Or wait a minute. But wait. But wait. Um, had it sitting right here. When I moved that thing. Here we go. This is what I was thinking. I also got this ribbon from Hope. And this is the ribbon I was thinking I'd put on here. It's kind of got the oranges and the blues, and it ties into both. Um, I don't have... I have the pom-pom ribbon in that gold, but I, I was hoping to have it in the orange, and I don't. So I think I'm going to use this. If I use the gold, I can always put it on the outside, maybe. But I think I kind of like this on here. What do you think? it's got that gold trim, like real gold trim. I'm going to use my Fabri-Tac again. And just do one bead down here. And it kind of gives you a, a kind of a separation between the um, fabric and the paper. I just always like putting some ribbon or something right, right there. Okay. Yep. And that did come through that ribbon. 
So I'm gonna have to let it sit here and dry. But it will dry clear, so no worries there. And there we go. And then I will, well, I'll go ahead and trim it while it's wet, even though I was gonna say I'll trim it after it dries. And I ended up cutting the, I think it's crooked. What do you think? Okay, quit messing with it. That's what you think. You're like, quit fooling with it and let it dry. Okay, so I have this little piece here and I can use it for, um, I can get one, one tag out of that. So that's awesome. All right, now I hope that this was helpful for you or I hope it was enjoyable. Um, if you like what you see, hit the like button. If you like what, you know, you hear or enjoy watching videos, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And I don't usually say that, but hey, why not? Um, anyway, and part two will be picking out papers. And I think we're going to use about a half and half mix of like junk papers and some pretty cardstock. I, I like that mix here of late. So I think we're going to go with that. So anyway, let me know what you think of the cover. I'm tickled to death to be able to use that, um, my truck and pumpkin. And I will, uh, I will see you soon in the next video. Bye.